and welcome. My name is Heroin Bob and welcome to Bob Buys Bread and Butter Breakdown. So I am going to break down a brand that I consider a bread and butter item for my business. So this is an item I can consistently find at the thrift stores or charity shops or garage sales for a low buy cost and consistently sell it online on the many different platforms that I use for a very decent profit. These are not necessarily going to be brands that have a high profit margin, but something that I sell enough of to where I consistently will continue to pick it up. So the first in this bread and butter breakdown brand that I'm going to talk about is Anchor Hawking. You guys have seen me pick up Anchor Hawking multiple times throughout my videos. Pretty much anytime I see this brand, I do pick it up. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Anchor Hawking, its start and what to look out for, how to find it, the different brands or lines within the brand, and uh, a little bit of comparison and comps so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The Anchor Glass Company was initially founded in 1905 as the Hawking Glass Company in Lancaster, Ohio, named after the Hawking River by its founder, Isaac Jacob Cullings. It then merged with the Anchor Cap and Closure Corporation in 1937, and that's when it became officially the Anchor Hawking Glass Company. The Hawking Glass Company and the newly formed Anchor Hawking Glass Company both were major manufacturers of something that is called depression glass, or as some people like to call it, uranium glass. Now this was a premium product, so if you ever hear about a vintage or antique premium product, that's not necessarily the quality of the product being produced, but that it was normally given away as a free offering to entice someone to buy something else. So a lot of early depression glass or uranium glass was actually something that was given away for free by stores or by companies in order to get them to purchase another more expensive product. So the way you can tell something is depression or uranium glass is that it will glow under UV or black light. It is super duper fun to test. Um, I do highly recommend that if you are interested in looking at or selling or buying antique or vintage glassware that you do carry a UV flashlight with you when you go thrifting or outsourcing. Um, I will link one in the description of the one that I use that's small and unobtrusive, but something that's still gonna be able to give you that glow so you can tell if it counts as uranium or depression glass. So after the Hawking Glass Company merged with the Anchor Cap and Closure Company and created the new Anchor Hawking Company, they decided in 1939 to create their own line of glassware. This first line of glassware is called Ruby Red. I will put some examples of Ruby Red up here above. It is highly collectible and very sought out after. I will also put a link in the description down below of some books that are available on Amazon if you want some reference books or if this is something that you want to learn more about. Another line by Anchor Hacking that is just as collectible as Ruby Red would be the Force Green line. So they definitely like their Christmas colors. Uh, this is the one that I would, I tend to get drawn more to because as you guys know, I really love the color green. And again, I will also link those Amazon resource books down in the description below if you're interested in purchasing. Two other lines that Anchor Hawking is known for is the Ovenware line and more specifically the Fire King line. So Fire King was basically Anchor Hawking's direct competitor to Pyrex. Just like Pyrex, it was a, this word, I can't say it, it's a type of glassware. The Fire King line by Anchor Hawking is so prolific and so desirable and so collectible that I'm actually going to have to do a separate video on that, which will follow this one um, at a later date when I get to F. Um, but when I do do that video, if you're interested in learning more about Fire King, I will link it in a card up above. In 1987, the Newell Company acquired the Anchor Hawking Company, and that is when a lot of the production for the glassware moved from the United States overseas. And in 2012, the Anchor Hawking Company was acquired by Oneida, and all Anchor Hawking currently is made under the Oneida Group and it is made overseas. So it is typically considered the more collectible is prior to 1987 and especially prior to 2012. Now the Anchor Hawking Company produced a multitude of colors and not just clear glass. 
it produced the royal ruby line that we talked about earlier, the forest green line, but it also has avocado green, blueberry blue, cobalt blue, milk glass, harvest amber, and then a lot of their clear glass is early American pre-cut or EAPC. If you see EAPC in a listing, that means it is early American pre-cut. So that's also something that you guys can look out for. There's definitely a whole bunch of patterns. Now, if you guys are outsourcing, the marks that you need to look out for are these three up above. So it's either going to be the earliest pieces prior to it merging was the Hawking Glass Company, and that's going to be in this triangle right here. After 1937, when it officially became the Anchor Hawking Company, it turned into this logo, which is the H over Anchor. And these are all going to be clearly marked. And then in 1977, they decide to modernize their logo and they decided to do the simplified anchor in a cube mark here as well. And that's normally what I find the most of is this particular mark here. Now, some marks that get confused for anchor hawking but are not actually anchor hawking is this mark here, which is an a, like H over A. This is Hazel Atlas. This is a glass maker, but it is not anchor hawking. And then also the stylized anchor here where it's like bloop that is um, anchor glass container corporation which is a completely different company even though technically the anchor glass container company bought a lot of the old anchor hawking factories to produce their glassware so when the new company acquired the anchor hawking company they actually discontinued a lot of the more interesting pieces that Anchor Hawking created uh, or would make, I should say. And that's something like candlesticks and decorative glassware. They focused more on their drinkware and barware and less on fun decorative art pieces. So normally if you find something like a pair of candlesticks with the Anchor Hawking logo, you can date that to pre-1987. So unfortunately, because Oneida acquired the Anchor Hawking Company in 2012, you have to use the Wayback Machine, the Internet Wayback Machine, to find the initial catalogs or the original internet catalogs for Anchor Hawking that allows you to identify a lot of the patterns that the glassware came in prior to this acquisition. I will put a link in the description of that resource so that way you guys can look up different patterns for yourself and that's normally super duper helpful. Hopefully you guys have learned something from this video. I hope you guys uh, liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know that you liked it and want me to continue making these type of videos. Um, these are bread and butter items for me. These are things that I pick up with my business model. Um, it may not work out for you, but that's okay. Thank you for watching. And um, thanks again to the College Picker for inspiring the series with his Every Brand Breakdown, which I will of course link in a card up above. You guys should definitely watch that. It goes over not necessarily hard goods like I'm doing here, but it goes over a lot of high-end brands and clothing as well as electronic brands as well. So that's definitely something that you should check out. Thank you guys so much for watching. The doggo has left, so that means it is my time to go as well. And until the next video, bye. Bye. Hero, hero. Hero, hero. Hero, hero. I wanna be a hero, hero. Oh, the hero.